welcome everybody to another tutorial brought to you by the King Bell and Blendication. If you haven't gone by the website yet, go over and take a look at some of the video tutorials that I have there now. This one will be there, uh, higher quality probably than the one that you're going to watch now. Um, what we're going to discuss right now is um, how to do vertex painting and the benefits of vertex painting. Airbrushing onto your model, this is a cool way of doing it, so I'm just going to show it to you. A um, couple of things that we want to look at first here is that I've already done a render of this guy holding just this regular procedural texture on him and that's what he looks like. Nothing too impressive. He does have some particle hair on him and obviously his tunic is a different color than his skin. His boots are part of this same mesh. I could separate those and I'll show you what, how that works. All right, I have a camera and, a, and several lights shining on him right now, and that's what gives him the uh, setup that I have right now. So let's take a quick look at this character and what we're going to do to him. From this point, I want to eliminate this procedural, but I do want to keep a texture there. So the material that's on him right now is going to be the base um, material, which will allow me to control like my specular highlight and stuff like that. But what I want to do now is tell Blender to make sure that it replaces the material with the vertex paint color that I'm going to apply to this character. So that's the first step right there. On the materials, make sure you select this. Okay. Um, next thing that I want to do is jump over right now to my vertex paint mode. Now, there's a couple of things here I want to point out real quick. One is this button right here. This one here will do masking. And that's what I was saying when I said that if I wanted to, I could mask off his boots. Because just simply by hitting the A key, you can see that no, no vertexes are selected right now because they're in this gray color. But if I hit the A key, now all of them are selected. I could mask off his boots simply by um, using the B key and just selecting the vertexes that I want to be able to paint. And that will eliminate me getting any overspray, if you will, onto his boots. I could just select all of his body and then make sure that I don't get any on his boots. But you know that would take more time than I want to spend right now. So what we're going to do is we're just going to hit A and select all the color. All right. We're going to select all the vertexes in this model so that we can paint freely on the whole model. And then we could paint his boots separately. Um, the next step in this in this process is going to be to make sure that I have this palette open. This palette is brought up by hitting the N key and this allows me to pick what colors that I want to be able to airbrush later. Um, later meaning after I do my um, initial setup. And the first step was to make sure that my vertex color was on. Next step is going to be go over here to the F9 edit. Uh, we want to go to this paint palette and it's over here with our mesh tools and stuff like that. If I don't have a vertex color on right now, I definitely want to add one. So you just click new and it will add a new one. And make sure that you have this this button right here selected on your vertex color or it won't be able to render with it. You want to make sure that that's selected. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pick a base color. And by doing that, we're going to go right in here to our paint palette. We're going to select our base color. I'm going to look around color skin so okay we'll use that now we're going to do is tell it the blender to set that as our base color and so blender happily goes out selects everything and turns it on I do have spray on which is like an airbrush effect um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to actually do some airbrushing on this character and see how it looks when we're done what we're going to do now is pick another color off of this basic color and we're going to give it some some give him some highlights and stuff. So let's go and get him a little redder color and we'll get some highlights painted on him. Again, I can control the size of my brush in here and the opacity of my brush. I don't want to go full uh, 100%. I want to be able to keep some of the other um, color showing. So I'm just going to use my my mouse button here to to do a little bit of painting on his on his skin. A little bit of where the highlights would be with skin might be a little bit thinner perhaps his forearms wouldn't necessarily be but under this part of the forearm is, is usually lighter under the palm is usually lighter 
use my middle mouse wheel to scroll out a little bit. So just make him a little lighter under this area. Let's get him a little redder up on his chest. Just a little something here. Not bad. Let's get a little bit more up here on his shoulders because you get kind of sunburned up here on the side of his neck. Let's do the top of his head. Let's zoom in a little bit. We'll get another redder color for around his eye sockets. Now I noticed that my brush was a little bit large, so we'll just scale that down a little bit. We'll just paint right around his eye socket. Now I would want this to be darker too. Uh, a little bit red, red around his lips. Zoom out a little bit. Let's get him a little darker around under his eye, under his eye. Now guys, again, this is just a quick demo. This isn't like for real, because if this was for real, I would spend a lot more time getting in on the details and stuff like that. But I'm just going to throw a couple of colors around, take a look at them. Let's get a little bit darker on this color. Make our brush a little bit bigger. We'll go right underneath his pec, under the bicep a little bit, and along the forearm a little bit. Again, under his, under this side just swooping down following the lines of his body that's the benefit of being able to see these masking lines of the vertexes because I can see where I want my flow to go the, the flow of both where he's going to bend when he's animated and the flow of the muscles in the stomach um, obviously he doesn't have really good abs but he's about he's not about that he's about you know eating things so we'll darken him up in areas where he'd be darker. Again, we can control our opacity, the size of our brush. We can also rotate the model to be able to go and paint in different areas. All right, we're getting some basic darkness in, in, in certain areas. We want to go and get a little bit of purple. Um, purple is just a way of, let's cut back on the opacity of that. And we'll spray a little bit of purple under here. That's just going to give him a little bit more definition. It's a receding color. It's going to push that back even further. You see this? Uh, now the thing is that what you want to remember here is that Blender is using the vertexes that it sees in order to airbrush this. So let's zoom in on this guy a little bit. And let's take a look and see what's really happening while I'm painting. Blender uses this vertex right here to determine where it can spray. If I try to spray in the center of one, not much is going to happen. Okay? There's nothing happening because it's not seeing that there's a vertex there. Even in the middle of an edge, it needs to be on a vertex in order for it to paint it. So the more vertexes I have, the more detail I can, and the smaller the brush I can use in order to get some more better effects here. So, Okay, we've got some detail here. Let's take a look at what it looks like by jumping out to object mode and taking a look at him. You can see the sunburned orange colors up on his shoulders and you can see that that's a pretty drastic uh, difference and probably a better improvement. Now I'd continue this down on his legs and on his arms and I can use this for several things. One is if I wanted to at this point I could go out and use my sculpt brush now that I know where my details are and I could go in and sculpt this character a little bit more, sculpt some muscles into him a little bit better, more definition, that kind of thing. Um, I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and that you'll stop by my website and check out some more. Until then, happy blending and thank you for coming.